Dear students, Namaste. Today, I shall be discussing about different treatment modalities for allergic rhinitis. As you know, allergic rhinitis is an immune hypersensitivity reaction leading to sneezing, itching of nose, water nasal discharge, sense of nasal obstruction, and sometimes decreased sense of olfaction also. By treatment of allergic rhinitis, we should be able to revert the symptoms of the patient and improve the patient's lifestyle. What are the different available treatment guidelines? They are allergen avoidance, most important, pharmacotherapy, treatment of allergy by medicines, immunotherapy, certain medicines or injections to make the patients immune for allergic rhinitis so that there will be no allergy when they are exposed to allergens as well and treatment of complicating factors. Allergen avoidance is the gold standard management for allergic rhinitis. Once you avoid the allergen, then there will be no allergy. Sometimes in your practice also you tell, hey, I am having allergy with this individual. So if you are having allergy with that individual, try to avoid that individual. That's the same thing. Allergen avoidance is useful for single or unusual allergen because if there are many allergens and usual allergens, we cannot avoid them. The person has to identify relevant allergen and they have to either completely or partially avoid the allergens. So it is important for the patient to identify the allergen, what causes the allergy for them. Like elimination of occupational allergen exposure. When the patient is having certain allergy in the occupation, they have to stop that occupation. Like using in the floor industry, some flowers, latex, like that. Elimination of pet allergen exposure is very important. If there are certain pets in the house and the pets come in living room, they have to avoid the allergen exposure, like dangers of the pet. Might antigen control measures. They are very difficult measures to control, but you have to clean the room daily along with bed sheets and linens. Frequent pet washings. If you cannot control the pets coming in your house, then you have to wash the pets regularly. Cockroach control measures, very important. Cockroaches are very important cause of allergic rhinitis. That too, perennial rhinitis in developed cities. So you have to control cockroaches in the house. The windows in the home or cars are to be closed so that the allergen will not cause the reaction. Central heating systems and cooling systems are good for the house and central air filtering system is required to control the allergens. So, if the allergen can be avoided, this is the best treatment plan for allergic rhinitis. Next is pharmacotherapy. Pharmacotherapy is the primary therapy for seasonal or perennial allergic rhinitis or when the patient has mild symptoms as well as severe symptoms as well. And corticosteroids are the mainstay of treatment in allergic rhinitis in mild to moderate symptoms. Topical corticosteroids come in sprays and drops. They are extremely effective for all nasal symptoms of allergy, including sleezing, itching, nasal discharge, nasal obstruction, itch. The formulations can be in beclomethazone, budesonide, fluticasone, or momitasone. Most commonly used is momitasone nowadays. Oral forms like prednisone 1 mg per kg per day in tapering dose for 2 weeks can be used, but they are not very frequently used. They are used when the patient has severe symptoms. And deeper intramuscular injections like Triamcinone, they are not commonly recommended. Because you know, they work for only 2 to 3 weeks. Patient has to get injections every 2 to 3 weeks. One of the common questions to be asked in the exam is, what is the rationale of topical internasal steroids in the treatment of allergic rhinitis? The answer is, topical internasal corticosteroids steroids help to achieve adequate drug concentration in the receptor sites in nasal mucosa. Therefore, the allergic symptoms can be easily controlled. Systemic steroids can cause many side effects, so the side effects of systemic steroids can be reduced with use of topical steroids with same amount of drug concentration in the nasal mucosa. Next are mast cell stabilizers like sodium chromoglycate drops and sprays. The mast cell stabilizers are less effective than topical corticosteroids and they are treatment of choice for young children because 
Young children may have absorption of steroids from the nose. So to reduce the absorption, natural stabilizers are very commonly used. In the histamines like chlorophenidamine, first generation, terfenidine, estimizole, loretarine, second, third generations, septrigine, fexofenidine, and ibaskin all can be used with good efficacy in allergic rhinitis. They are effective against sneezing, itching, water nasal discharge, and the eye, palate, and throat symptoms. Basically, itching symptoms. You know, antihistamines stop the function of histamines, so they are usually useful in itching purpose. But they are less effective in nasal decongestion and blockage. So, with this, sometimes we have to use nasal drops also. And they are mainly taken at bedtime because they might cause sedation and sleep. So, newer generation of antihistamines are less sedative than older ones and they can be used in daytime also. But before that, you have to ask the patient's occupation. When the patient has to use machines, then it is better that patient need not use antihistamines. Or they have to use newer antihistamines with less sedative action. Next are topical vasoconstrictors like xylometazorine, oxymetazorine, and ephedrine. These drugs instantly open the nose. That means they are very effective against nasal blockage. They have swift action against nasal blockage, but they should not be used for longer time. If they are used for longer time, they might cause rhinitis medicamentosa, which I'll be discussing in the next video. Rhinitis medicamentosa is one of the common questions to be asked in the exam as well. Topical anticholinergics can be used when the patient is having much of the nasal discharge, then nasal obstruction, and other allergic symptoms. Epinotropin bromide can be used as the nasal spray. Leukotriene inhibitors can be used as the second line drug in allergic rhinitis, like Montelukast, Zafirlukast, and they block the function of leukotriene. So, the lead symptoms will be reduced in allergic rhinitis. This is all about the pharmacotherapy in allergic rhinitis. But patient has to be tailored in one or two certain drugs. Don't use many drugs at the same time. When the patient's symptoms are controlled by one or two medicines, they can be used for longer time. But steroids should not be used for longer time, especially oral steroids. Topical steroids can be used even in pregnancy. Allergen specific immunotherapy, this is very important. This is also very commonly practiced in the treatment for allergic rhinitis. This is defined as practice of administering gradually increasing quantities of an allergen extract to an allergic subject to eradicate the allergic symptoms by subsequent exposure to the causative allergen. So, minimal amount of medicine to be given for the patient to stop the symptoms of allergic condition. That means the patient has to come for longer time for the allergy to be reduced. This is the technique of providing immunity for the patient with use of medicines. Indications for allergic specific immunotherapy are pollen sensitive patients having single allergen, failing to respond to conventional treatment, having intra level side effects of treatment, and unable to avoid the allergens. The patient should know his or her allergens. This is very important. So, when the patient is having many allergens, this is impossible to have specific immunotherapy because the name itself signifies this is specific. When the patient is having diabetes, hypertension, and steroids cannot be used, then the patient can be a candidate for specific immunotherapy. And when the patient has certain job that cannot be quitted, the patient has to have specific immunotherapy. The contraindications for immunotherapy are patients with multiple allergies, as already described, significant medical illness like diabetes, hypertension, and taking drugs likely to impair the treatment of anaphylaxis. The procedure for allergic specific immunotherapy is the allergen is injected subcutaneously in increasing doses till the maximum tolerated response is reached. Nowadays, it may also be delivered by the oral, nasal, or sublingual routes. This is the new advent in medical practice. The monoclonal anti-IG antibody produced with the help of immunotherapy induces the reduction of serum-free IG levels, leading to less reactions, reduces the symptom mediated by IG immunoglobulin, and reduces the severity of the symptoms of seasonal allergic rhinitis. Therefore, this is important for seasonal allergic rhinitis conditions, having minimal amount of allergens. 
Success rates of allergic specific immunotherapy are 80 to 90 percent for certain allergens, but may not be good for all. The problem with this procedure is the course is longer, so it takes around two years or more for the patient to come to clinic and get injected. And sometimes anaphylaxis reaction might occur when the patient is having injections. Therefore, everything has to be made ready for control of anaphylaxis if the patient gets anaphylaxis during the injections. Please subscribe my channel to get other videos in classes relating to ear, nose and throat. Thank you.